Job announcements can oftentimes be vague or completely untrue. You can easily find yourself confused and struggling on your first day. Let's talk about expecting the unexpected. First, the job duties can be misleading. What I did on a daily basis as an analyst in the government was not covered in the job duty description of the job announcement. The job description and duty section were very vague. The announcement stated they wanted somebody that had data analytical skills, but it did not say what you would be analyzing. It did not talk about exactly what I would be doing. Take a look at this GS-13 job announcement for an analyst in the Department of Homeland Security. They are telling you, you will review, analyze, evaluate, and report. But in what system? For what reason? That part is missing. It also wants you to be proficient in Excel, Word, and PowerPoint so you can make recommendations. You will have to be flexible. A lot of federal employees will not know the full scope of their job until they actually start working for the first two or three months. This is especially the case if the job announcement is generic and unspecific. Now, if you're watching this and a federal government job interests you, then I would encourage you to check out the link in the description below where you can find some tools and information to help get you a government job. Next, the job announcement doesn't tell you who your boss is, who you will be reporting to. And this is a shame. Most workers do not quit their jobs, they quit their bosses. A tough job is made easier when you have an understanding and reasonable supervisor. And an easy job can easily feel like hell if you have a micromanaging, aggressive, unreasonable supervisor. Now, you won't know who your supervisor is until you actually get to the interview. And even then, if you do not take the initiative and ask, who does this position report to? Then you might not find out until your first day at the job. If you do end up with a toxic supervisor, then you can always hop back on usajobs.gov to start applying for another position. There is no minimum amount of time that you're required to stay in the position before you start applying again. Next is you do not know what the office tempo will be like, how hectic and busy you will be on a daily basis. Now, there are some government jobs where you will have a lot of time to accomplish your duties. In fact, it seems like you have more than enough time. Other government jobs will have you running around crazy. One thing that comes to mind is the Office of Chief Financial Officer. If you hear the acronym OCFO, that's what I'm talking about. Working in that type of environment could have you working on 10 different tasks at once. And you're busy, 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 feeling like a hamster on a wheel. No matter how much work you tend to be doing, it doesn't really feel like you're making meaningful progress. But by taking a job with high office tempo, you could open yourself up for overtime hours, which means more money. And if you truly believe in that organization's goals, then that probably wouldn't be an issue for you. But if you value your time and time with your family more than you value the money, then that could be an issue. I personally had experience in both type of environments, but if you're blindly applying to multiple jobs, you really will not understand what you're getting into. Next, you do not know if the hiring manager already has someone in mind. Certain laws require that job announcements be posted for a certain amount of time. And just because the job announcement is open to the public or it's posted for a week or two weeks, it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone will have a fair shot at it. There are times where the hiring manager does have someone in mind. Understand this, once HR sends a certificate list to the hiring manager, then it is up to the hiring manager to look through that list and pick who they will interview. On that list could be a familiar name. It could be someone that's already working in the office, a known quantity, somebody that the hiring manager might have preference for. So they will select that person. And there's not much you can really do about this. And there's a lot of people that come complain to me saying that they can't get a fair shot, that USA Jobs is rigged against them. What you need to do in this type of situation is you keep applying. Even if you know that someone that was less qualified than you got the job, do not let that discourage you. Do not get hung up on that. Work on your resume, work on applying, keep applying to the positions that you know you're qualified for. Eventually, you will get picked up, you will get that job, and you will start working as a government employee. Next thing is, you don't know how many people applied for that job announcement. Some job announcements, they only receive a handful of applicants, maybe a dozen or less. Other job announcements, 
can get over a thousand applicants. Now, usajobs.gov is doing a better job. Some of the agencies are doing a better job of showing you after you've already applied, it shows you how many applicants. I would say about 10, 15% of agencies are doing this right now. They're not all doing it. Hopefully that number increases. So when you're looking at a job announcement, deciding, do I want to apply for this? You're not going to know upfront what the competition is. And some people are saying, well, it doesn't matter how many people apply. If you want the job, just try to get it. And I agree with that to a certain extent. But if you saw two job announcements and you only had time to apply to one and one job announcement shows eight people applied and the other one shows 1,500 applied, which one do you think you would have a better shot at? At the end of the day, applying for jobs is still an investment of your time. Despite all the smoke and mirrors, a lot of people continue to have a desire to be a federal government employee. This is largely because of the benefits and perks that this type of job can offer. Most people understand the basics regarding the benefits, but if you would like to learn more about the perks of a federal government job, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.